let's start off with some good news. Good news, everyone. Really exciting news coming from the Advanced Placement Computer Science Exam had its best year ever. We had 111,000 students take that exam, getting into computer science, up from just 54,000 last year. Historical growth, record number of young women getting into computer science taking that exam, and underrepresented minority students getting into computer science as well. In fact, there's more young women taking that APCS exam this year than all exams from 20, in the year 2013. A lot of organizations across the country, government, academia, private sector, nonprofit, worked really hard together to make this happen. But sadly, we're not quite there yet. We are still about halfway where we should be amongst all of the other STEM subjects. We are far, far behind. You can see physics, biology, stat, everything's still quite popular, and we gotta catch up to where they are today. And the reason for that is only about a quarter of American high schools teach computer science. And as it turns out, you know, these are the first uh, at a Lovelace, the very first computer science and Mark Zuckerberg. And as it turns out, the economy needs more and more software engineers and computer science in the private sector, in the public sector, national defense. There's going to be one million new computer science jobs in the economy over the next eight years. And for every single filled computer science and software engineer jobs that are, that are filled, six to eight more jobs gets created in the economy, depending on which study uh, you read. And it is the number one ticket to the middle class. As someone mentioned before, uh, computer science is now at the highest paying undergraduate degree. We just overtook petroleum engineering a couple years ago. And it was life changing for my family and our family circumstances when my dad got his graduate degree here in the early 90s at NDSU. And that is a great tool for economic justice for a lot of students though. So if, even if they're on free reduced lunch, their kids will not be on free reduced lunch. And in addition to being an economic engine, our founding fathers knew really, really well what was um, really important to a thriving democracy. And the number one ingredient for that is a informed citizenry. That's why the post office is invented to distribute newspapers, not to send out Amazon packages everywhere. Um, and today our students need to understand the digital world around them because they're gonna be the ones that are voting, voting for, uh, for governors and senators that are gonna be legislating these things and change and how it change and shape our society. So when our students gonna read about all of these things, you know, technology-wise in the newspaper, they need to have a high school level of understanding of computer science so they can actually participate in our democracy. And Everything else that our students are going to do will need computer science. They're, they're probably not going to be a computer science for computer scientists' sake, but they're going to be experts in other domains where they actually need to have a background in computer science. I think for businesses of tomorrow or even maybe a year from now or, or already, computer science and data sciences are, is going to be just like Excel is, or Excel is to businesses today. Some jobs are going to go away, like, you know, like in the olden times, elevator operators, you don't see those anymore. But a lot of other new jobs are going to create it, and we want to make sure our students are equipped with those set of skills so they can be successful in whatever career they end up in. So for example, the Seattle Sounders are using big data to figure out how to win, uh, how to win um, and they just won an MLS Cup. NASCAR Formula One cars all have tons of sensors on them, generate terabytes of data. They can simulate races in real time. Manufacturing is going to be incredibly different. Gillette has a shaving lab that puts a lot of sensors, and you, they figure out the angle and the force, and they can design a better set of blades, not just adding the eighth or ninth blade, but uh, adding more, uh, figuring out how to, how to you know, shave different parts of the body. And really, also, it's going to enable people to see trends over time, see cause and effect that people are just not very good at seeing, but computers can see, and it's going to revolutionize manufacturing. Toasters. Toasters are going to be smart and order its own replacement when it realizes something is wrong. 
hot tubs. Your hot tubs are going to sense when the water is getting a little bit funky and order cleaning supplies or schedule a cleaning uh, because they have Internet of Things in them. Johnson Control, for example, have con connected chillers that are telling people it needs service instead of waiting for an actual breakdown. And you do not want an HVAC breakdown in the hospital middle of the day. Same thing for agriculture, precision agriculture and agricultural technology. Internet of Things will monitor water usage, soil, wind, rain. You don't have to drive around the farm and take soil samples. That means less water, less energy, less wear and tear on machinery, reducing costs, but also enabling the farmers of tomorrow to increase sustainability and yield and feed the world. And in finance, law, medicine, everything else, neural networks, AI will sort of enable what people seen in Star Trek when they talk to the Star Trek computer. And it's going to make people do their jobs better and help them make their better decisions with more and more data. It all sounds like science fiction, but we already have echoes in our home, and it's coming very, very soon. And so we want to make sure, in order for our students to be able to be a part of that economy, be a part of that future, they have to have computer science in their background. Computer science and computational is foundational, like biology, chemistry, and physics, whatever they end up doing. And whether you're in Lee County, Kentucky, or you're in Quincy, Washington, every student needs to have the opportunity to learn computer science. So go volunteer, go donate, go invest in our kids and our schools in computer science so they will all have a future that they can not just be a, uh, they can be a part of and in part um, help design and build. Thanks everybody.